Nintendo has done something insane, something impossible, something that I didn't really think was ever going to really happen. And that is breaking records and doing things that I just didn't imagine. And some of this is good and some of this is bad, right? We're going to dive into some stories about how Nintendo isn't crediting everyone when they probably should. But more than that, we got to dive into the good news first. And that is about Nintendo breaking a 34-year-old record, which... Man, it's insane how long this record's been around. Before we dive in, just want to remind you, we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. So, hey, look, if you want, I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel and uh, drop a like. And why not go down to the comments below and tell me what your favorite Nintendo game is of all time. All right, let's go ahead and dive in here. And we see this at screen, Rand. It says the Nintendo Switch just made history, breaking a 34-year-old record. And oh man, this is it's actually insane. So we go down here, it says the Nintendo Switch has set a record for being the longest a Nintendo console has gone without a successor, beating a record that has stood for 34 years. Nintendo's wildly successful hybrid console was first released in 2017 and shown incredible longevity for hardware that is relatively underpowered compared to its competitors. Although the still unnamed Switch 2 will be revealed before the end of the fiscal year, the Switch family of consoles has hit a significant milestone and it will increase its lead until its successor's debut. According to the Video Game Chronicle, the Nintendo Switch turned 2,687 days old on July 11th, 2024, at which point it became the Nintendo console to remain the longest without successor hardware. The previous record holder was the Famicom, which was available for 2,686 days before the debut of the Super Famicom. The Famicom and Super Famicom were redesigned as the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, respectively, for release in the West. This distinction is important because Famicom's Japanese release occurred in 1983, where the Super Famicons in 1990, and yeah, compared to the NES and SES releasing in 85 and 91, respectively. Uh, pretty insane. There's a lot of stats you can go into this. Uh, you could talk about how the Famicom and Switch are certainly outliers for longevity because other ones that are out there, there's the Wii and the Off Forgotten Color TV game system at 2,191 and 2,235 days, respectively. Uh, but the Switch's long life is certainly helped by it being a hybrid system, of course. And it's absolutely insane that uh, Nintendo has pulled this off the way that they have. Uh, again, we know a replacement system is coming. We know it's just a matter of time. Uh, but it's still just crazy to think about how Nintendo has been able to keep this system going for so damn long. It's honestly impressive. And I... Look, it's going to, I don't know if this record's going to be broken. Uh, is Switch 2 going to be on the market so long that it'll break this record compared to Switch 3? Or whatever's next? I have no clue. Also, in case you were wondering, yes, this record actually holds true for the whole video game industry. Beyond companies that went out of business and never released a new product, for companies continually to release new products, yes, this is the longest gap with all of them, whether it's Sony or Microsoft or Atari or anyone else. So, yeah, uh, Nintendo and Switch seems to be quite the special combination. But everything isn't so rosy at Nintendo. And look, we're not afraid of covering these stories, even though they are a bit negative. Well, not a bit. They, they're pretty negative here. Nintendo apparently isn't crediting external translators for their major games, at least not properly. I have some thoughts on this that defend nintendo a little bit but i'm just going to tell you right out the gate i think the right thing to do is to credit every single person individually that's ever worked on the game no matter how small the role is uh translation is actually a pretty big role that could take several months so let's go ahead and dive into this because game developer did an excellent piece on this and it says nintendo's systemic policy of miscrediting is harming external translators so Let's read this story here. It says, Nintendo has failed to credit external translators who worked on major first-party titles, including The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and Super Mario RPG. Multiple sources who chose to remain anonymous for fear of reprisal have told game developer how Nintendo repeatedly failed to credit them for their work on a litany of critically acclaimed titles, despite them spending months translating each product for audiences around the world. 
One source, who previously worked at Nintendo before becoming a freelance translator, said they were always credited as an in-house employee, but noted that wasn't necessarily the case in other departments. I was always credited at Nintendo. I remember seeing my name in the credits of a Nintendo game for the first time. It feels really great to be acknowledged for your work. It's like a warm thank you from the developers and the company for all the work you put in, they explained. I do remember one project where the company decided not to put in the in-house testers in the credits, and that was Professor Layton Games by Level 5. Nintendo of Europe handled the localization and publishing for the Layton series at the time. The translators on that project protested strongly against the decision, but in the end, and the testers were not credited for this project. I don't know if this has since become policy. Now, after uh, departing the Japanese company, they continued working with Nintendo on projects as a contractor through service provider LocalSoft. They have yet to be credited for their work on Nintendo titles, though, uh, through LocalSoft, and claim they also worked on Nintendo Project at Keywords, where they also failed to receive a credit. I kind of accepted miscrediting as part of the business, but that doesn't mean it's fair or right. The fact that these companies are not able to give any reasonable explanation for omitting external translators and even developers from their credits is proof of this, I think they continued. Professionally, it's hard to tell how much of this has impacted me. It's entirely possible that more translation agencies would have approached me if my name was out there on all these big blockbuster Nintendo games. But who knows? Those claims were corroborated by another source who spent over a year working on multiple Nintendo projects at LocalSoft but haven't been credited. It is a Nintendo policy to not list the name of translators from external agencies in their game credits, which also forbids us from listing those titles on our CVs, explained one source. They said when working on Nintendo titles as an external translator, they were asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement with a standard duration of 10 years, prohibiting them from discussing or promoting their work. Game Developer has viewed an email that confirms Nintendo has used a decade-long NDA on multiple projects. You look at the credits of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, for instance, you will notice that only six people were credited for localizing a full title that's available in eight languages. Our source continued. In my experience, a game like this would normally be localized by a team of around 25 translators. Some languages are skipped over completely, like they got magically added to the game. And for games like Animal Crossing or Breath of the Wild, you don't really notice that 15 or 20 translators are not in the credits, as there are all the other names from their in-house translators, which is why Nintendo's policy of miscrediting may have flown under the radar. But almost every big title that Nintendo releases which uses external translators actually fails to credit translators. Now, my general thoughts on this are pretty strong that Nintendo should just be crediting every individual that's worked on it, even if they want to credit them as, hey, credit to X localization team, and then they list all the people that worked for that localization team on the game. I do think that is something Nintendo should do. Now, to say that there's a miscrediting I think is a, a, a lie. I actually went back and looked at some of these game credits and they do mention the localization companies. So the company that they work for is being mentioned as part of the localization talent. So that's not a miscrediting, it's a crediting to the company you work under and that company is getting the credit for, hey, look at what this company has done for Nintendo. Now, I don't obviously uh, want to get into the politics of all that and that 10-year NDA. Yes, they are technically breaking that NDA right now, um, hence why they're anonymous, but they are breaking NDA to even come forward with this. And the weird part is, like, the one person said that, hey, I accepted this as being part of the industry, which means they accepted the NDA and they knew this was going to happen before they ever worked on the game, and they're complaining after the fact. This kind of feels like a thing that should be protested before you work on a game rather than complained about years after you finish working on a game. I, I, that's my real only uh, thing here is like, I want Nintendo to credit everyone. Absolutely, they're in the wrong, but I don't think that this is the right way to go about it. I think you just start a protest for the next project. So next time they hire this key place or you know this local place, instead of just outright working, pick it. Go outside, protest, do something, and actually like let the public know that, hey, all we want is credit. We're not asking for more pay. We're not, we just want Nintendo and this company because the agreements between the company and Nintendo. So the employer you're working for are the ones that are okay with Nintendo not crediting you individually. They can negotiate that into the contract. So this first starts with the company you work for. 
Then it goes to Nintendo. Now, the 10-year standard practice NDA, yeah, that comes from Nintendo, but that was negotiated with your employer. So your complaints should first go to your employer, and they need to decide how they want to work with Nintendo or not. Uh, and they probably are willing to do this for all these companies, because, by the way, Nintendo's not the only one not properly crediting people at external uh, places because this company just wants the payday. And ultimately, it is just a job, and they're not complaining about their pay. They're not complaining about... Uh, you know, any of their benefits or any work-related issues. They just want to see their name in a game, and they think it might help them get more jobs. And maybe it would. Uh, you should be able to put down that you worked for X amount of years for this company that is cited as a source of translation and all these other things. So you actually could pseudo get some credit for what the company has done. It's not that hard, even if you can't mention specific projects, but you can just show, hey, while I worked at the company, these are all the games that they got listed on uh, as credit for translating. So I clearly worked on some of that. I just can't confirm or deny individual projects. It's not that hard, but, uh, you know, that's why I kind of think that this is one of those weird complaints. This isn't like when there was the quality testing group for Nintendo of America that had legit complaints about how Nintendo employees and Nintendo as a company were actually treating them. This is more so well, Nintendo has this policy we don't like, and I agree. I think it's a crappy policy and shouldn't exist. But also, it starts with the company you actually work for. You need to talk to them and get them to you know, put more requirements in with these other companies if they want to hire these studios to allow creation of individuals. But you're not really complaining about the job itself. And I highly doubt any of you translators that work at these places have a hard time getting translation jobs. You might, you know, you argue that you think there might be more opportunities, but you don't know. And again, you can still mention that you worked at this company and during this time is public information. This company is listed as credits on all these different games. That's definitely stuff you could put on your resume because you could put down games as examples of what the company you worked for translated, even if you can't put your own examples down. Um, I think the business world understands how NDAs work. Anyways, I'm just saying there's ways that you could spruce up your resume to still make it look pretty damn impressive. That being said, I'm just going to leave this uh, at that and get your guys' thoughts on it. I'm not defending Nintendo's practices here because they absolutely shouldn't be doing it. But I also think this isn't really the way to go about fixing the issue. Uh, and I don't think it's going to actually fix the issue. So take that for what you will. It's probably going to continue to happen. And Nintendo's not the only company not doing it. It starts with the companies they work for not accepting those sort of terms from the companies trying to hire them. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJance from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about all this stuff down in the comments below. And I'll catch you in the next video. <laughs>